Hi friends, it's Monica and let's talk about the books I read in June. First off, I did want to say thank you to everyone that has been supporting and liking and commenting on my videos because we just recently hit 300 subscribers and I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you that has been watching my videos and I do hope that you have found a book or two from my videos to add to your own TBR. Also, I was part of a fun collaboration that was uploaded last week and there was many many great booktubers in there and it was created by Library of the Viking. We were sharing what were our favorite book of 2023 was and if you are interested in watching that collab, the link will be down below. June was a month that was a great mix of genres for me. I read three fantasies and three contemporary romances. I noticed that I was following a pattern to my reading last month with a contemporary romance and then I would switch to fantasy and then it would just go back and forth. Anyways, let's just get right into the first book, which was Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez and I rated this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. In this one, we are following two doctors. Mainly, we're following Dr. Brianna Ortiz and she is recently divorced and also trying to find a kidney donor for her brother. And what do you know, the perfect match of a kidney donor is our love interest, Dr. Jacob Maddox. And these two really get off on a rocky start, but it quickly goes into the romance territory. Both of our characters are recovering from past failed relationships and this brings up a lot for them. For Brianna, she is learning to learn and believe in love again. For Jacob, he struggles with social anxiety and also coming to terms with how his ex-girlfriend is now engaged to his little brother. Of course, this is a romance book and I have to mention the tropes. There is the one bed trope and also fake dating. My highlight of this book for me was that this is a relationship that highlighted the aspect of social anxiety and how ease and having that supportive partner is very important and with Jacob and Brianna, their relationship was very sweet to read about. There's also a cameo from Alexis and Daniel from A Part of Your World, which is another Abby Hibbins book, so I really like their appearance and their role that they played in this one. Overall, this was a really sweet and caring romance and I really do highly recommend it. Switching gears, I then picked up a epic sci-fi fantasy which was The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin and I rated this one a 3 out of 5 stars. We're set on a planet that has constant earth-shattering disasters and we're following a vengeful mother at Sun who after coming home from work discovers that her husband had murdered their son and also kidnapped their daughter. Now she is trucking across this deadly land in order to save her daughter no matter the cost. I would describe that the fifth season has a unique approach to the reading experience, especially in the first chapter where we are presented with um, second person present tense point of view. So the perspective is like you are doing whatever. So that was a really interesting take and I was quite gripped by that at first. But then within those chapters later on in the book, I started to not really connect too much with that character. Personally, this writing style isn't up to my taste, but I really did love the world building. It's really exceptionally done. Magical users in this world are known as Origins and they are able to trigger earthquakes simply by their emotions. And there's more magical complexities, but I don't want to go too much into that. Origins are actually feared in society which results in oppression and unfortunately some origins being killed when their magical powers are revealed. The author does a great job at showing how the origins are fighting against this oppression and how the society at large is still continuing to fear them. There is a huge twist near the end of the book and once you think about it, it really does make sense and it did surprise me. I really love the diverse cast of characters in this book as well as the mysterious lore of this sci-fi fantasy world and I do think I will be continuing on with this series. Then I picked up Hello Stranger by Catherine Center and I rated this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I also have a separate review video up for this one if you're interested, the link is down below. Sadie is a starving artist and she is struggling to make ends meet until she has a lucky break with being a finalist in a portrait competition. With all these things going well for her, 
she just can't catch a break when she has to get brain surgery and as a result something goes wrong within the surgery and then she's diagnosed with face blindness. This is where her brain can't recognize people's faces. Another thing to make Sadie's life more complex is that she begins to fall for two different men. A quick review for this one, Sadie is someone that has a series of unfortunate events that occurs to her but at times she did come off as a little bit self-centered but uh, given all the events that has happened to her, I do understand where she's coming from. On the flip side, I did like how even though a life-changing event might occur, there was that message that you can come out on the other side with this acceptance and self-love. And also both of the love interests were very supportive of Sadie and they were decent enough of making a light-hearted romance for this book. And overall, I do recommend this book if you are looking for like a vacation read or a road trip read. It's a very lighthearted romance and not too serious, so I do recommend it if you're looking for something like that. Next, I read Daughter of No Worlds by Carissa Broadbent and I rate this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I was curious about this one since I saw its cover floating around. This is an adult romance fantasy with sweeping storylines about our heroine Tasana who has been a slave since she was a child and she has earned her way to freedom with a great effort. She travels her way across the kingdom to Aura where she wants to join the orders that can help her hone her magical abilities and there she meets her reluctant mentor Max. This brings about their slow burn romance that builds up over friendship in late nights. I really did like their chemistry together and I really did like how it was a gradual build up and not just instant. The world in this book is quite vast with its magical hierarchies, power struggles, and politics. I was very much enjoying the first half of this book with Tisana's point of view but then it switched gears at the halfway point when we are introduced to a second point of view. Although I did like the change in action but the narration really did throw me off a bit for the pacing. However, the characters do shine through quite brightly in this book with their tragic past and then a healing from their past within each other and within themselves. This is my first book by this author and I thought the writing was poetic but not overly so and I do think I will continue the series but I'm still on the fence about it. And then I read Shadows of Self by Brandon Sanderson. I rated this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This is the second book in the second Era Mistborn series which takes place about 300 years after the original events of the main trilogy. The whole gist of this entire fantasy series is with its magical system known as Allomancy. Our characters are able to ingest metals and different metals grant different abilities and now in the second era Mistborn series there is now more modern technology being thrown in. Shadows of Self is a sequel that definitely does build on the foundation that's laid down in Alloy of Law, the first book, and it really does it quite nicely with the new technology, new mysteries being thrown in, and our characters trying to grasp their new roles within this budding society. I really enjoyed the plotline with the growing civil unrest within the citizens compared to the nobles kind of fearing for their lives. And also with the murder mystery our characters are trying to solve. Our main characters Wax, Wayne, and Miracy ground us from different perspectives. For Wax, he is still reeling from the death of Lassie and her death occurs in the prologue in book one so it's not really a spoiler. And he still has aftershocks of grief that is being pulled to the surface and plays a background role throughout his actions and thoughts in this book. But he forges on ahead with focusing on his detective work. Wayne is still definitely the comic relief character but in this book we do get a deeper emotional layer to his character about some guilt that he has of his past actions. Then from Mercy's perspective, we see the restructuring of the policing force in Elendil and especially how she is a woman on the force. And I really do like her character a lot more in this installment compared to book one. Her intelligence really does shine through. She still has that bashful, youthful side to her, but it really is overcome with her strength and her persistence in achieving her goals. 
But then the ending reveal really did shock me and I'm really looking forward to see where Brandon Sanderson takes us in the third book in the series with these characters. The last book I read in June was The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren and I rated this one a 3 out of 5 stars. I think when this book did release there was a lot of hype over it and I think in my opinion it was overhyped. Anyways, we are following Sadie Montgomery who considers herself the unlucky twin while her sister Amy has harbored all the luck throughout their lives. However, during Amy's wedding reception, all the wedding guests get violently ill from a seafood buffet except for our protagonist Sadie and the best man Ethan. But there is a free all expenses paid honeymoon to Hawaii up for grabs and Sadie and Ethan take the chance to take that vacation but they hate each other. <laughs> Although I do think the hype on this book was overly exaggerated, I did have a lot of fun with this one. I did like how Sadie and Ethan do have a gradual buildup of their relationship and getting over their mutual dislike for each other and then turning into something more. Some tropes that we do get in this book is rivals to lovers, fake dating, and pretend marriage of convenience. They develop a friendship over the course of the vacation and there's mutual attraction with each other and I do feel like their banter was really fun to read about. However, I think after the vacation ended, it's like real life hits them in the face and then there's a subplot about the twin sister Amy and Dane, her husband now. That wasn't really up to my taste. Overall, this is another recommendation for a really fun vacation read if you want something to pass the time that on Honeymooners would just do it for you. Those were all the books I read in June. I really do hope you enjoyed watching this video and all my reviews on these books. And comment down below what you read in this month. Also, don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and don't forget to also ring the bell to not miss any future uploads, and I'll see you all in my next one. Bye!